Hello everyone, I am Chen. I am delighted to present our work, Semi-Dynamic Node Balancing, Efficiently Distributed Learning in Non-Dedicated Environments. This work is from Hong Kong University of Science and Technology and the University of Toronto. Given a machine learning model, the objective of the model training process is to minimize the loss function over the whole training dataset. One typical training algorithm for that is SGD, which iteratively refines the model parameters with the gradient calculated from a sample batch. Nowadays, machine learning models are often trained in a distributed manner. Within each iteration, workers will calculate a local gradient and refine the global model remotely. As for the correlation among different workers, BSP is the most popular one. Its basic idea is to have workers synchronized at the end of each iteration. There are various cluster environments for distributed learning. Here, we classify them into dedicated clusters and non-dedicated ones. Dedicated clusters are composed of homogeneous hardware. They have excellent performance. However, Dedicated clusters are very expensive to maintain. In contrast, long dedicated clusters have heterogeneous hardware and dynamic resources. For example, a budget limited user may choose to train models with heterogeneous GPUs in local inventory or from the public spot market. Meanwhile, large companies often host multiple machine learning jobs in shared production clusters. Compared with dedicated ones, long dedicated clusters are much cheaper and easier to access. We can imagine that model training in long dedicated clusters would be more common in the future. Which is the research focus of this work? Strapers is a thorny problem for distributed model training, which severely slows down the model convergence. We categorize the stragglers into two types, long deterministic stragglers and deterministic ones. Long deterministic stragglers is caused by random perturbations like OS jitter or garbage connection. They are usually transient and slight, insignificant to distributed learning. In contrast, Deterministic stragglers are caused by inconsistent resource quantity and quality, which exist only in non-dedicated clusters. Deterministic stragglers are usually long-lasting and silent. Under the popular BSP scheme, the fast workers would have to wait for the stragglers almost in each iteration. And this largely slows down the model convergence. In the research literature, the first strategy to handle stragglers is to bypass stragglers with relaxed synchronization. Asynchronous parallel, or ASP, allows workers to iterate without waiting for others. However, workers may iterate with outdated parameters, and more iterations would be required towards more convergence. A follow-up method is SSP, which bounds the maximum iteration gap among workers. However, for the long-lasting stragglers, the quota on iteration gap can be easily used up, and SSP would then downgrade to BSP. In data analytic frameworks like Spark, a typical strategy to tackle stragglers is redundant execution. Its key idea is to launch multiple copies of the straggling task. For distributed model training, Redundant execution means to launch a few backup workers. In this figure, there is one backup worker. In each iteration, the gradient of the three workers finishing the earliest are connected. Lastness, redundant execution can only eliminate the worst case stragglers. Among the three faster workers, worker three still lags behind others. Meanwhile, it is also a resource wastage to maintain the backup workers themselves. A third strategy is to eliminate stragglers by load balancing. 
Existing load balancing approaches can be classified into static ones and dynamic ones. Static load balancing allocates a fixed load to workers, or with a fixed algorithm like round robin. It is simple and lightweight, but fails to react to runtime resource violations. Dynamic load balancing adjusts the worker's load in worker's duty manner. It has three steps. First, to measure the worker progress, second, to detect the stragglers, and third, to transfer the load from stragglers to others. A recent work, FlexRR, has adopted dynamic load balancing to distributed model training workloads. This figure shows a key procedure. Where the workers remotely exchange their progress at a fine time granularity. Once a worker lags behind others over a certain extent, it will transfer some load to the faster ones. Yet, progress negotiation and load transmission is a huge communication bottleneck. Moreover, the work stealing matter assumes that samples in an iteration are processed one by one. However, in modern machine learning frameworks like TensorFlow, all the samples in a batch are packaged into a tensor matrix and processed as a whole, making such work learning method incompatible. This table summarizes the properties of the aforementioned strategies as well as all design objectives. In this work, we wanted to design a load balancing scheme that is practical, effective, and also efficient. That is, it should be compatible to modern machine learning frameworks and it can effectively speed up model convergence with low overhead. The solution we develop is called semi-dynamic load balancing. Semi-dynamic load balancing is a combination of static and dynamic methods. It keeps workers load static within each iteration, but dynamic across different iterations. In particular, the three steps of dynamic load balancing are conducted all at the iteration boundaries. Semi-dynamic load balancing is a great fit for distributed model training. First, it is possible to sense worker status at the iteration boundaries. Each SGD iteration follows the same computation graph. Therefore, the execution status in rest of the iterations can work as a valuable reference for the future. Second, all the workers have to wait at the barriers of BSP, and such synchronization barriers provide a natural time opportunity to centralize worker execution information and identify stragglers. Third, the batch size is an ideal tool to control iteration load at the boundaries. Model training is a stochastic process and insensitive to particular samples. Therefore, by simply adjusting the batch size instead of remote sample transmission, we can attain the same load Turing effect. We further propose LBBSP by combining semi-dynamic load balancing and BSP. Its objective is to equalize workers' batch processing time by tuning batch size. Here, the batch processing time can be decoupled into two parts, computation time and communication time. Computation time is dependent to the batch size. In this work, we design an analytical method for CPU clusters and a numerical method for GPU clusters based on their own characteristics. Many traditional machine learning applications like SDM are generally trained in CPU clusters. Besides, long urgent neural networks may also be trained with the leftover CPU resources. We first profile the static performance of standalone CPU workers. In the two figures, we measure the batch processing time against the different batch sizes for various CPU instances and EC2. The batch processing time is proportionally determined by its batch size. 
we call the linear ratio as sample processing speed. The ideal batch size of each worker is proportional to its sample processing speed. However, that sample processing speed is dependent to the instantaneous resource. The two figures show that the CPU workers are slowed down severely after restricting the CPU and memory usage. Therefore, in shared production clusters, we need to predict the worker sample processing speed priori to each iteration. Then, how to predict the sample processing speed with the best load balancing performance? After exploring a series of related works, we found that NUX is a best fit. NUX means nonlinear autoregressive network with exogenous inputs. Basically, it is an extended recurrent neural network. It makes prediction with both the speed series and the driving resource series, like CPU and memory. By considering these driving resources, NUX is robust to random variations and can react to the resource variations timely. Next, we turn to LBBSB design in GPU clusters. In the two figures, we record the computation time against the different batch sizes for various GPU instances on EC2. First, we find that the communication time for GPU workers is no longer negligible. Second, there is a constant GPU notch overhead that any batch size must be. Third, the computation time is no longer proportional to batch size due to the GPU saturation effect, which means that the computation time is almost a constant if the batch size is small. Finally, given that all the model parameters and samples must be stored in GPU DRAM during model training, there is a limitation on the maximum batch size each GPU worker can serve. For GPU workers, profiling a nonlinear relationship at one time is inconvenient, which incurs extra programming and time overhead. Instead, a numeric method is more appropriate for GPU clusters. A GPU worker's batch processing time increases monotonically with batch size, and its performance is stable in most consecutive iterations. Therefore, we can iteratively adjust the batch size towards the optimal setup. We design a dropping algorithm for GPU clusters. After each iteration, we identify two workers. The slowest worker called a straggler and the fastest worker called the leader. Then, we decrease the batch size of the straggler and increase that of the leader by a given step size. Under LBBSB, workers have different batch sizes. We first find that a naive average would make the aggregated gradient biased to those from small sample batches. Then, we propose weighted gradient aggregation, that is, using the batch size as the weight when aggregating the gradient. This way, LBBSB can achieve the same model training accuracy as BSP. We have implemented LBBSB as batch size manager, a path module that is pluggable for modern machine learning frameworks like TensorFlow and PyTorch. Before the start of each iteration, each worker reports its latest execution status to the batch size manager and then gets the updated batch size for the upcoming iteration. We have conducted a series of experiments to evaluate the performance of LBVSB. We first create a 16-node GPU cluster to emulate the scenario that users have to train with heterogeneous GPUs due to budget limitation or resource sharing policy. We also create a 32-node CPU cluster based on a Google trace to emulate model training. 
in your shared production cluster. That cluster also expects dynamic resources by having machine learning jobs competing with fixed jobs in the background. We include all the related methods as baselines, and the models we train are ResNet, Cephronite, Inception, and SPM. These figures show the model training efficiency in the 16 node heterogeneous GPU cluster under different schemes. Here, the model convergence time is decoupled into the average iteration time and the number of iterations requires towards convergence. And the value in each case is normalized by that under BSP. From these figures, LBBSP can remarkably reduce the iteration time. Meanwhile, it can reach model convergence with the least amount of iterations. As a result, it speeds up model convergence by over 54%. To better understand the performance of LBBSP in GPU clusters, we build a small cluster with four different GPU workers. And these two figures show the instantaneous batch per second time and batch size. Initially, with the same batch size, there is a large gap among worker batch per second time. And then that gap can be gradually reduced with the batch size automatically adjusted. Meanwhile, LBBSB can also react to network variations. At iteration 150, we downgrade a worker's bandwidth from 10 Gbps to 2.5 Gbps. LBBSB can soon counteract that by batch size queuing. Next, we turn to LBBSB performance in the CPU cluster. Here, RE means redundant execution with two backup workers. And flex RR is the aforementioned dynamic load balancing scan. From this figure, LBBSP can make the shortest average iteration time, outperforming the second best by around 40%. As for the prediction performance of NOx, in this figure, we present a snapshot of the predicted sample processing speed, as well as the real one. This figure confirms that, by considering the driving resources like CPU and memory, NUX is robust to random perturbations. And meanwhile, it can react timely to the deterministic stragglers caused by resource variations. To conclude, in this work, we found that stragglers in non-dedicated clusters should be load balanced in a semi-dynamic manner between the batch size at the iteration boundaries. In particular, batch size should be adjusted in an analytic manner for CPU clusters and in a numeric manner for GPU clusters. A prototype implementation shows that LBPSB can speed up model convergence by up to 54%. Thank you for listening to my presentation. Welcome for any questions.